Good evening. Good evening. My friends, welcome to God's house tonight. It is one of those very special nights. As we gather in the midst of Holy Week, we stop tonight and are reminded of a very special evening that took place long ago, where in the upper room our Lord Jesus blessed his disciples with the institution of the Lord's Supper, went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and on that very night was betrayed. So as we gather here, we are reminded of how our Lord chose to bless us, to serve us with his love that would take him even to the cross. It's a part of our continued journey towards the celebration of Easter Sunday and the joy that that day brings, being reminded again of the price that our Savior paid for us. And so tonight, welcome. Welcome to our Monday Thursday worship service. I invite you to join your heart tonight with mine in prayer. We come before our Lord. Dearest Lord Jesus, on this night long ago, you were betrayed and you were left alone. You endured great suffering. You endured heartache and pain, and yet, in doing so, you chose to serve us. And so tonight, speak to our hearts. Remind us again of the depth of your love. Remind us again of our life being different and changed because of all that you've done for us. On this Monday, Thursday, come and help us to remember. To remember all that you have done for us. In your holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We begin then as we join in the singing of our opening hymn. You will find it in your hymnal, hymn number 109, the hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane. We join in song. Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Blessed be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. We hear the reading of tonight's first lesson. Hello. First reading, we have Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. We join in the singing of the first verse of our hymn, Christ the Life of all the living. suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. We sing the second verse. of Luke and the Gospel of John. We hear these words. In the evening at the proper hour, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he offered to them, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And so he got up after the meal. He took off his outer clothing. He wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his seat. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and you call me Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I am your Lord and teacher, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Once you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Here ends the reading of our gospel lesson. Tonight as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper on this Monday Thursday, we join together as we are reminded from the Catechism of what the Holy Supper is all about. And so as we look at these words, I invite you to join with me as together we read the account from the Catechism. We join together. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that in the sacrament forgiveness of sins, life and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. You may be seated. We join in singing the third verse of the hymn, Christ the Light of All the Living. tonight as we think about Monday Thursday suppose like Jesus this was the last day of your life and suppose you know it suppose you know that tomorrow you're gonna die in the most gruesome and heinous of ways <coughs> what would you do on your last day then I can name a few things I bet you wouldn't do you probably would not spend time in the office you probably wouldn't clean the house. Okay, well, maybe some of you will. <laughs> you probably would not pay petty bills because suddenly all of those things would not be important. If you knew that this was going to be your last day, I would almost bet anything that you would do something for those who are the closest to you that they would remember you by. would almost guarantee that. Well, my friends, that's kind of how it was on that first Monday, Thursday, during the first Holy Week. Jesus knew that his last day was coming. He knew that his hour was near. And as the Son of God, he knew that Judas was soon to betray him. He knew he would be arrested. He knew he would be tried. He knew he would be condemned to death. He knew all of this. And then some. 
It's like John wrote in our gospel reading for tonight. Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands. That he had come from God. And he was going to God. He knew it. So what did Jesus do this night before his death? He could have tried to escape. He could have tried to skip town. He could have tried to fade away into the countryside to hide. He could have done some miracles to demonstrate his power for one last time. I mean, he could have, you know, like shown fireworks or something and miracles to demonstrate that he was who he said he was, like in a great big grand finale. But he doesn't do any of those things. Instead, he does something very profound. I wish they will remember him. He celebrates the Passover. And he serves his disciples by washing their feet. To which his disciples would say, yes, I remember. Well, if you would picture this then with me. Jesus is with his disciples. Jesus is at the place of honor at the table. He is the master. He is the Lord. He's the teacher. He's the most important person in that room that night. For and everybody there knows it, right? He's the one who sh others should be waiting on upon hand and foot. And yet as the scene unfolds, what happens? John, the gospel writer, gives us a good look. He paints the story as if the actions are in slow motion. And he replays the moment when Jesus gets up from the table. The moment when he lays down his outer robe. The moment when he wraps the towel around his middle. He plays out the moment when Jesus pours water from the, into the basin and begins to wash one disciple's feet. Then the next. Then the next. He even tells how, despite Peter's objections, Jesus doesn't stop. He knows his betrayer is there at the table and even continues to serve him, to serve every one of them until he's done. And then he puts on his outer robe. He returns to the table and he says, Do you know what I've done for you? And looking back, Every one of those disciples would say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I see what you've done. I remember. I remember the night when you chose to serve me. And so tonight, for us, is also a night of remembrance. In his last earthly days, Jesus chooses to help those disciples remember what his life is all about. And guess what? Tonight, we too remember that Christ's life is about serving sin-broken people and making them whole. A woman named Nancy put a local ad into the newspaper, and it read, If you are lonely or have a problem, go ahead and call me. I'm in a wheelchair. I seldom get out. We can talk about problems with each other. Just call because I like to help and I'd like to talk. And the response that she had was staggering. 30 or more phone calls per week. I mean, can you imagine? What motivated her to reach out from her wheelchair to help others in need? It's this, because she remembered. She remembered how a savior had made her whole, even in the wheelchair. Her story is that even in the midst, before her paralysis, she had been perfectly healthy, but she was in deep despair. She had great guilt, she had great anguish, she had full blown, blown, blown brokenness of soul and spirit. She had done wrong, her sin had found her out, and with nowhere to look for hope, she had done the unthinkable. She had driven her car off a steep in Bankman seeking to take her life and paralyzed and in the hospital her roommate began to talk to her about Jesus. Talk to her about his pain. Talk to her about his suffering. Talk to her about his being broken and Jesus being broken and on a cross how it would make her whole. 
She taught, he talked about how he gave his life so that through faith she could have life. And for the first time, this woman felt love because Jesus understood brokenness. He would understand her. For the first time, she felt clean inside because Jesus understood being unclean because he bore our sins and he made us clean. For the first time, she felt hope because Jesus understood hope and for the first time, she understood wholeness of life deep in the soul where she could be at peace. Because through Jesus, she understood forgiveness. She had entered the hospital utterly frustrated. But when she came out, it was like Jesus said to me, Nancy, you've had a healthy body but a crippled soul. From now on, you will have a crippled body but a healthy soul. And as a result of that experience, she surrendered her life to serving the Lord Jesus Christ just as he had served her. And he chose, she chose to do it one person at a time in the way she could. She remembered. Do you remember? Do you remember what it is like to make mistakes? Do you remember what it's like to fall short? Do you remember what it's like to have shame and guilt in your life? Do you remember what it's like to see your life come apart and to know that it's happening because of the choices that you've made? I mean, do you remember what it's like? Because in part, our night is a night of remembrance, but we also remember that we are the ones that sin has had its way with. And we remember that the finished work of sin is to kill the soul. And it's at work inside of us. And Jesus says, do you understand what I have done for you? As he washes their feet. And looking back, every one of them would say, yes, Lord, I see what you've done. I remember. I remember this night when you chose to serve me. Which then leads us to point number two. This same Jesus has chosen to serve you. The same Jesus asked, do you remember what I've done? It's easy to remember the brokenness and the sin and the pain and the shame. And sometimes for us, it just overcomes us. Jesus says, but do you remember what I have done for you? Do you remember your failings, your shortcomings, your shame, your guilt? Look how I have served you. When you feel the mistakes of your past and the brokenness that sin has brought in your life, come to me. Sorry for your sin and I will forgive you. When you feel the heartache of falling short and you don't measure up, come to me. Trusting in my promise and I will lift you up. When you feel the guilt of failure, when you feel the shame of wrongdoing, when you feel the sights of being condemned zeroing in on you because you deserve it, Jesus says, come to me. Believing my words of invitation and I will cleanse you. I will wash you. I will make you as white as snow. Jesus chose to serve his disciples that day by washing their feet. Guess what? Jesus chooses to, chooses to serve his disciples today, you and me, by washing our hearts. Tonight, we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. And as we do so, St. Paul writes the words, he says, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember. You remember the Lord's death until he comes. So tonight, as we take the Lord's Supper, we remember. We remember his body broken on the cross. When we take the Lord's Supper tonight, we remember his blood shed upon the cross. When we take the Lord's Supper tonight, we remember that he chose to serve us by laying his life down so that through him, you and I, would have life that is really life. Life now living in grace, living in forgiveness, living in the love of God, and life forever in eternity in the heavenly home that our Father has prepared 
for us. Do you remember and believe it? Do you remember then live it? It's real. Do you remember then let it make you whole? Because that's what this night is all about. And so we put ourselves in Jesus' place tonight. What would you do if it were your last day? Would you do so and do something that people would remember what your life is all about? On the night which Jesus was betrayed, shortly before his death, Jesus chooses to serve his disciples so that they would remember. Let you and me together remember too how Jesus chose to serve us and the difference it truly makes. I remember. In Jesus' name, my dear and precious friends, amen. I invite you to arise. We join in a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, this is truly a very sacred and special night. Draw our hearts close to you as we receive your very body and blood this evening. Cause us to truly remember you are our God. We are your people. You chose to serve us that we would have life, hope, peace, and the certainty of heaven. So speak to our hearts this night as only you can do. In your holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our service continues as we worship our Lord tonight with the giving of our offerings. <laughs> Tonight, my friends, we have the privilege to celebrate Holy Communion, and as we do so, tonight we're going to come and commune by kneeling at the altar rail. And it's been a little while since we've done that here as a church, so simply a reminder, this side will commune here on the side, this side will commune on the rail on this side, you'll receive the bread and the wine, and then as the basket is passed and you place your cup in it, at that point, feel free to stay at the altar as long as you want in prayer. And then we ask you then to stand up and to return back to your seats along the side aisle. When the communion table is empty, the ushers will let the next group in. And we'll just commune in that way. To give some uh, uh, direction, since it's been a long time, I think I've heard it was before COVID that we did it this way. So uh, what a treat for us tonight at Monday Thursday. 
With that, I invite you to stand as we join in the communion prayer and as we hear the words of institution. We join our hearts as we pray. Lord Jesus, on the night you were betrayed, you gave your disciples of all time the gracious gift of your body and blood. As we walk with you each day, we stumble and fall because of our sins. Help us to come to your supper with repentant hearts, seeking the forgiveness of sins through your supper. Lord, give us the strength to rise again so that we may continue to walk with you and serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. My friends, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had broken it, and he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And in the same way also, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. You may be seated as the sacrament is distributed.
Now may the very body and blood of Christ Jesus our, Lord, Jesus, our Lord, strengthen you, preserve you in true faith unto life eternal. Depart from the Lord's Supper with great peace, for your sins are forgiven today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. Our service draws to its close this night as we join in the prayers of the congregation and the Lord's Prayer. We come before our Lord. We pray. O oh, dearest Lord Jesus, on this night long ago, you showed us the very depth of your love. You yourself prepared for us a heavenly banquet, one in which you forgive us of our sins one in which you call us close to you in newness of life, and one in which you give us the certainty of our eternal home. Tonight, as we have received your Lord's Supper, help us to remember, to remember the depth of your goodness to us, to remember the new life that is ours, to remember that our lives indeed are new because we walk with you. As we gather here this evening, we remember a world that is filled with brokenness and pain, and so we lift before you those in our church family who are facing difficulties, heartaches, or pains, or burdens. We ask, Lord, that where a word of comfort needs to be spoken, that you would speak to the heart. We ask, Lord, that where a word of guidance and direction needs to be spoken, you would speak to the heart. We ask, Lord, where a moment of healing for the physical needs of those who are close to us, that you would bring that healing. We remember, O oh Lord, as we gather here again this night in our special prayers, Warren Pauling, the son of Audrey Pauling, who suffered a stroke here. We ask, Lord Jesus, in a very special way that your hand of healing and help would be with Warren. We ask that you would watch over all who face the battles of stroke and health, disease and sickness. Let your healing care walk beside Strengthen the heart, the soul, and the spirit according to your good and gracious will. May this happen. And now, O oh Lord, tonight as we stand in your presence, we remember those things that are upon our heart today. And so with all of those things, we bring them before you now in the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As is a Monday Thursday tradition, the altar is stripped in recognition of Good Friday that is to come, and Jesus being betrayed on this night. And so we pause and we remember as the altar is stripped.
Would you please stand? We close with the words of blessing and then the singing of the first three verses of hymn 345. Our blessing tonight is spoken together for as a family of God, having received the very body and blood of Christ together, we are united with Christ and with one another. And so we speak the words of blessing together. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. We join in song.